One thing that I think is on a lot of people's minds when it comes to living or traveling overseas, living the nomadic capitalist lifestyle, where you're going between different destinations much of the time, going between different homes around the world is, will I be safe? How will my safety be impacted? And a lot of us have grown up in countries where we're told, hey, here it's safe. Other places, it may not be safe. Well, in this video, I'm going to shatter that misconception and talk about where some of the true safest places in the world are. Hey guys, I'm Andrew Henderson. If you want to learn more about how Nomad Capitalist helps seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go offshore, reduce their taxes, get second passports, go where they're treated best, learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. And let's talk today about some of the safest countries and the safest places in the world, because I think a lot of people have it entirely wrong. You know, one thing that we've done here on my team is we're constantly looking for new data points. We do a lot of research. We do a lot of uh, analysis on different things. And so when we go out and look at a lot of these studies or the indices of you know, most peaceful countries, happiest countries, safest countries, the one thing that we find, and I've talked about this once or twice before, is they're almost entirely Western-centric. When you go and look at the reports on anything about you know, good countries, you always see Switzerland, and you see Singapore, and you see Germany, and you see Canada, and you see, you know, sometimes Norway or something like that. And, you know, I look at these lists. I've been to a lot of countries around the world. I've lived in places that most people couldn't find on the map. And I try and go to places that are off the radar because I think there's a lot more opportunity there. And so a lot of people would think, you know, Andrew, you're going to be killed one of these days. In all my years of doing this, 13 years of extensive traveling, I've had one time where a gun's been put in my face. I can't remember a time when I've had anything stolen. I can remember a time when stuff that I had in the U.S. was stolen, not once, but multiple times. And so when I see people just repeat the same countries over and over again, these are the best countries for expats, these are the best countries for your family to be safe, I say to myself, these people have never been anywhere. So I found an index called the Numbio Crime, uh, International Crime Index. And we went through some of the numbers and what we found might surprise you. And I'll add my commentary as we go. Now, a score under 20 was considered very low, as in very safe. A score under 40 was considered safe. And then above that, it became moderate and all the way up to insanely unsafe. Some of the safest cities in the world indeed are Quebec City. Uh, Zurich, Bern in Switzerland, Irvine, California, right? Suburban Orange County in uh, the Los Angeles area. But what you also have is places like Tbilisi, Georgia, where I have a home and have spent a lot of time, Minsk, Belarus, Doha, Qatar, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and others. These were some of the safest cities in the world. In fact, in many cases, they beat out the aforementioned cities. Taipei, Taiwan uh, was another city on the list. And to me, you know, if you go and live in, let's say, Tbilisi, Georgia, or you go and visit Tbilisi, Georgia, I walk around at all hours of the night. You know, people go out, they go to these Georgian Supras, they'll have two liters of wine, they'll be <laughs> falling all over themselves, they'll be walking home. Uh, I've had people who've come and met me who've done that. They go out clubbing after the dinner, and you hear from them at four in the morning, and I just got home safely. No one worries about it there. Uh, nobody's too concerned about it. You know, you walk around, whether you're... Uh, you know, a six foot four guy like myself, or whether uh, you're a smaller uh, woman, uh, whether you're a child, everyone's out at all hours of the day, and that says something to me. Um, part of it's the culture. You know, I've talked to people who say, I want a place where I can let my kids just go, and I open the back door and they go and run around. Places like Georgia, you can do that. A lot of places around the world, you can do that. You can buy a home just a little bit outside of town, and that's how people live. They don't lock their doors. The kids all play around. No one's being, you know, monitored the way that some of this, uh, these parents now in the Western world are doing, where you have to be afraid of everything. Uh, it's just a different way of life. But also, these places are legitimately safe. Now, in some of these Gulf countries, for example, it's because the government doesn't tolerate any nonsense. You know, I've been to countries like Mauritius and, and some of these countries in the Gulf and elsewhere where you know, they just don't put up with anything. And if you get out of line, uh, they're taking you away. And that's very much different than what you see in the Western world now, which is interesting because 
if you're going to have a safe country, you'd think you'd want to crack down on crime. And yet so many Western countries now, you know, there's the story of the guy who was a mass murderer in Norway. And they're, they're putting him in the jail cell. And it's like, okay, like, is, is the PlayStation modern enough for you? Like, are, are you okay, Mr. Mr. Mass Murderer? Oh, oh, okay. All right. Like, I don't know how that really prevents crime. But those are some of the safest places on the list. Now, let's talk about some of the most dangerous places on the list. South Africa. Many South African cities are on there. Venezuelan cities. Uh, Brazil. Also, Memphis and uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. Now, what are people going to say? Well, I live in Baltimore, but I live in the, the Tony suburbs of Baltimore where there's no problems. Well, I would say the same thing about some of the other places on this list that are unsafe, like Mexico City does have relatively high crime scores. I just spent two months in Mexico City. I've been to Mexico City many times. And by following you know, basic precautions, um, I don't use public transit, for example. You can, but I don't. Uh, you, know, you keep your wallet in your front pocket. You don't look like a total buffoon. Um, you know, maybe you don't walk in certain areas at night, but I've walked places late at night in Mexico City. I walk all the time, but I also am in the good neighborhoods. I also stay in the nice neighborhoods. You go to Polanco in Mexico City, you can't go five feet without seeing the police uh, driving around and patrolling the areas. Why? I guess that's where people like you and I like to go. Uh, I like other areas in Mexico City as well, but they're also pretty safe. There are areas, you know, you're not going to go and live in the, the slums. Right? And so it's the same thing about Baltimore that can apply to a place like a Mexico City. Right? You're not going to go and live in the worst part of Baltimore. You're not going to go and live in the worst part of Mexico City or any other city. And so if you follow that metric, then really no city is necessarily unsafe. I have a home in Bogota, Colombia, and there are parts of it that are not that safe. Where I live, surrounded by embassies, and it's very nice, and you have wealthy people, you can walk around. You can walk around at night. It's not that bad. Of course, you can have an incident anywhere. Uh, I did have an incident in Managua, Nicaragua. I do think Central America, there are parts where that's probably the area in the world that actually does most concern me. Uh, and that I'd be most cautious about is some of those countries like Honduras, Guatemala, Nicaragua, El Salvador. Uh, but let's talk about El Salvador. San Juan, Puerto Rico scores higher than San Salvador. San Juan, Puerto Rico, where Americans, including some very wealthy people, are going to legally reduce their taxes, as we talk about here at Nomad Capitalist has a higher crime rate than San Salvador, El Salvador. I can tell you, I've got a pretty strong stomach when it comes to going places. After what happened to me in Managua, I went to El Salvador a couple years later, and I was walking around on eggshells. I got to admit, I'm like, what's going on? You know, I'm using, I'm really being careful. And I was fine. Nothing happened to me. Um, but that part of the region is concerning. I've also been to Puerto Rico. It's worse. So, I mean, I do recommend folks to sometimes to go to Puerto Rico to limit their taxes and reduce their taxes as Americans. By the way, there's good areas in Puerto Rico. You can live in Dorado. There's some really nice places, and that's what you'll do. But if we're just looking at the numbers, uh, then San Juan is worse than one of the most violent places in Central America. Okay, So you have to keep that in mind. Other statistics. I saw a map. We came up with this. Um, I think uh, one of our team members found this uh, of uh, rapes in Europe. Uh, England, Sweden, and Iceland had the highest numbers by far. I mean, it's not even close. Germany actually seemed like it was relatively low. Um, but Serbia, 144th the number of rapes compared to Sweden. Now, you can say some people aren't reporting. You can say it's a different culture. It ain't 144th. It isn't 98% lower. Okay. Um, the countries that we talk about that are off the radar are the ones where people are relatively safe. You go to Belgrade, you go to Montenegro, I go over the Balkans, I feel very safe. Um, and so you know, not every city that is listed as dangerous, of course, is dangerous in every area. And so you know, if you want to live in Mexico City because you love Mexico, I think you can find a place where you will be fine. I, I had a uh, an editor who worked for us, he used to live in a suburb of Mexico City uh, that was not as safe. Uh, they were never physically harmed, but they had a couple of uh, you know, break-ins. Someone broke into the car and you know, stole a phone or something. Um, yet, I know people who live in some of the best areas in Mexico City, and they're fine. Never seen anything like it. Uh, so there are pockets in any place. That's the first thing to keep in mind. Uh, there are safe pockets no matter where you want to live. But there are also cities in places that most people haven't heard of that are some of the safest places in the world where crime isn't tolerated 
And I think we're honestly, in some of these cultures, the people, uh, they're just living more harmoniously than where I come from in the United States. Uh, I can honestly say that. Uh, and so if you're looking for the safest places in the world, they're probably not the places that you think. We've seen, uh, you know, through some of the recent uh, health crises uh, that health and the healthcare systems in some of the Western countries are not as developed as people thought. And I think that by that same standard, the safety, the crime is actually much better in many cases in places that you would never think of, in places that are off the radar. The lists that these magazines and these studies put out that are totally Western-centric, I believe, are absolutely wrong. I can say that having gone to over 100 countries. If you're looking for a safe place to go, these are some of the places I would consider. You can go and check out the list. We'll put it in the, uh, there's a link here in the video. Um, take a look at it. You're going to see a lot of names that you have not heard before. Those are some of the places that I think offer a lot of opportunities for not only lower taxes, not only lower cost of living, better quality of life, better investment opportunity, but also a safer place to be. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.